Dearly beloved of the Lord, our God, praise the Lord, and God is our Father. And so when we approach him, we approach him in adoration. And so let us dedicate our little time into his presence by prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you that you have given us opportunity to remain alive, to remain alive as your children, and we pray that, Lord, that we may dive deeper into your word so that it energizes us it refreshes us and so that we can continue in your journey, in your walk, because we have to glorify your name all time. Bless this time, O oh God, as we read through, as we talk about your word and meditate deeply about it, because it is life in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, God has always remained gracious to us. He is our Father who keeps loving and correcting and directing and guiding us. He is our star. Remember that actually He leads us. He desires us to go His way. And His way is life. And so we shall always be happy, happy, happy to read His word, to think through His word, to meditate. That is what it means. And direct our thoughts, speech, and actions because we have to live godly lives. And so we continue reading his word because his word is life. I've always mentioned that, and I'll never tire to mention that his word is life. And his word corrects, his word directs, his word brings about order. And the reason why from Genesis, we read him mentioning, telling this order, telling chaos, now let there be light, and there was light. And so his word is our life. His word is our light. And so we continue with our biblical personalities. And now this time, we shall continue on talking about the men and women that God used variously at different times to bring his word, to tell the generations then. And so that these things are written down, and written down for us to read, you'll find correction here. You'll find rebuke whenever there is error. You'll find comfort, consolation when there is, and then when there is trouble. And then you'll find, well, cheers, you know, dancing, jubilating in his word. And so we now talk about the people in their specificity, the prophets. Prophets, of course, we have talked about the prophets in our earlier episodes. And now we again talk about in its specificity, the prophets of God as the Bible talks about them. And I just desire to give a general overview of the prophecies of the prophets that God used to bring his message. And I want to underline the word that God used to bring his word to his people. And so these prophets, the Bible is full of the prophecies. And who is a prophet? A prophet, of course, by definition, and in Hebrew or those earlier languages, Nebi, Nabi, 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 a prophet, the one who spoke, whom God used a person called, a person appointed, and God uses them as his mouthpiece. He uses them to speak the word that he intends for his people. He brings it through the living person, the walking person, a person living among the people. And so he appoints one of them to speak his word, and we have called it a mouthpiece, through whom God reveals his wisdom, through whom God reveals his secrets and underlying secrets, through whom God reveals his plans, underlying plans. And so God uses them to reveal his intentions to the people, his wisdom to the hearers. And we shall be talking about them, revealing his plans, revealing his intentions, revealing his secrets. And what is a secret? A secret is something that is hidden, uh, that is not public yet, 
and so God does reveal. And so when you look at the word reveal, of course, making known, making public, making known things that could have been hidden. And so we have the hidden secrets of God. And I've used the two words, hidden secrets, and that one, depending on its intensity, because there are things that are much deeper that God can reveal to his people through these people called the prophets. And I just want to rush quickly into the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 17, because there's something that is spoken there, and it is very, very clear, and Amos brings it, because we are defining, we are talking about a prophet, and Amos chapter 3, verse 7, that gives us the intent of what God wants to do. Amos 3, 7, the Bible says that for the Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. God does nothing without revealing his secrets, his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Now listen to me, that actually God reveals and here the word that's coming out is revealing, making public. So that actually what was hidden, God's intentions, when God wants to do something, he reveals it. He brings it through somebody whom he has appointed. And underline also, not anybody. Not anybody that God can use. He has his measuring rod, his yardstick that he used it to pick among his people. Whom to send, whom to speak to and through. I'm saying speak to and through. Because his word comes to this person, to this person, and then through this person, the word is propagated, spreads, is sent to the people. So from the very beginning, dear brothers and sisters, God speaks through his people. He speaks his word. Call them oracles through his appointed people, appointed. And we can't ask how he did it, why he did it, why not anybody, why not everybody, but he remains God who chooses whomever he chooses. I like that phraseology as Paul puts it in Romans, God chooses whomever he chooses. He calls whomever he calls and he equips them to speak out the word. And so this session, this episode is revealing to us about how God appoints and why God appoints and he uses men and women. Of course, I could you discover that actually there were various. There were women, there were men. And then you'll discover, as, as I'm going to explain a little further, there were those who wrote, called writing prophets, and then there were those who did not write. And I'm going to distinguish all those ones. And then as time goes by, we shall be picking one by one. What did they speak? Why did they speak? And do their oracles, do their messages still speak to us today? And of course, actually, something that actually we desire to pick something in this generation. All biblical personalities like I've been going through, there's something that I pick. And when we share together, and I know you also do the same, pick something from them. And so that the way they walked, the things that they did, could, you know, you could also align yourself and walk a God way. And because actually there's life to live here on earth, yes, we must live here life on earth. Eat well, sleep well, drink well. You no, know, things. So actually we, we enjoy ourselves here. And of course, actually suffering is also come, sicknesses come, death come. Yes, while we are here, all those come. But also there's life to live thereafter. And so this is the reason why God reveals and we believe that actually we shall go to our Father one day. And when we go, how shall we go? And so these prophecies, these prophets speak something that will correct where there is error, that they will warn where there is mistakes, and they will rebuke where there is error, and they will energize, they will cheer up where there is, you know, something has gone right. So prophets, I mean brethren, were appointed by God. 
himself to reveal his secrets, to reveal his will, to reveal his counsel to his people. Make predictions through dreams, through visions, and through face to face. Pray the Lord. And remember Samuel, one of those that actually God called. And he was in there in the in the synagogue, in the I mean in the sanctuary, lying down, and then he heard God calling, and he runs. And which message was he had he been given? Was he going to be given? The message was direct to the person who was in the sanctuary, to the family of Eli. And so God appoints and God calls his people variously. And here we give an example of Samuel. And Samuel called by God and he receives a message and he had to deliver it to the person, the intended, the, the intend, intended person, intentioned person. And so friends, we are benefiting a lot from this word. We are benefiting a lot from God's word and these personalities, the prophets spoke. And so by the end, we need it also to see, do we still have prophets? What yardage can we use to measure, to measure them? And so this is something that actually uh, we desire. And so actually we make our work clear before God. And when someone speaks that he is a prophet, so what is the yardage to measure? I mean, is he God called? God has called him. God has called her. Or they are self-styled people. And actually, even in the Bible, we shall find them. That those who came speaking, they were speaking for God. And God says something, actually, as we are going to read in the, the next few, a couple of minutes. And so when God does prophecy, revealing his wisdom, revealing his secrets, revealing his plans through a person, he intended to do this. These were the intentions. One, to teach. So prophet did the word of the work of teaching. And the prophecy that came was to teach. Number two was inspiration, to inspire. And you'll discover that as we read through all these prophetic books, you'll discover that there was the word of inspiration. And we shall be going one by one at one moment to see teaching, to see inspiring someone. And what is it, what does it mean to inspire? These, these days we are, uh, the world is awash with inspiration speakers, inspiration speakers. Someone comes to inspire, to, 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 to put fire, to stir up someone. And so we need a message, a prophetic message that stirs us up, that encourages, that lifts us up. And this is inspiration to inspire. And then number three, the prophetic word came to refine Something that has gone crooked, refined, bring it back on order. Maybe it needed, you know, correction here, put right here. The word of God is a yardstick to refine us, to refine our walk, to refine our talk, to refine our behavior, to refine what we have to do. And particularly in this generation where we are, things gone crooked, the word of God refines us. And so prophetic word, is it, be, is it then the times when the prophets were speaking, the ones that are going to mention, or is it now? Because okay, everything is written here in this word of God to refine us, and we need, we need it. And so another, finally, there could be many others, but let me end with this one, warning. To warn impending danger. Something is, you are doing something, but the outcome will be this. The outcome will be that. And so the prophets came, and you will discover that many of them, when they were speaking, they were pointing people to the future. Warning, all this actually teaching, inspiring, refining, warning is for now, but also pointing to the time to come. And so this is our life. We are living today, but when you have tomorrow, you are living today, you are eating today, but you have tomorrow. You are doing something today, but then you have tomorrow. Are you a student? You are doing something today. You know, all those things pointing us to life to come, in the days to come. Are you a younger person? Not only God, when God, when God keeps you, you have the future to live. Now, are you a parent? Now, you have children. 
pointing to the future. Friends, I have found this very rich, informing our times, as it did at that time. The prophet spoke during that time, and they still speak the messages today. And so just like I've said, a prophet that came, a prophet that came to speak, to teach, to inspire, to refine, and warn. I've just only picked these four, but there could be others that you can come up with, but they are all pointing to our destination, that everything that we do now, everything that we talk now, everything that we act now has a pointer to the life to come. You are living today, but how about tomorrow? You are eating today, but how about tomorrow? You are sinning today, which impact? Or you are enjoying today, which impact is it going to have to your tomorrow? So God does all this teaching, inspiring, refining, and warning because he wishes his people good. And underline this, God does everything because he wishes us good. He loves his creation. Is it a warning? He warns because he wishes somebody good. Is it a rebuke? A rebuke is not for bad intention. It's to correct because he wishes us the good. He wishes the best, actually, not just the good. He uses the best for his children. He loves us. And so he desires that we walk his way, or that we do his things his way. We act his way. And so that his blessings will be powered down on us. So that his favor rests upon us. You can imagine a child in a home who does what the parents like. You may be nine, you may be 10, you may be five, you may be three. Yes, there's no segregation that is allowed. There's no favoritism that's allowed. But you discover that any child that does things his or her parents' way, there will always be some connection, some attachment of sorts. Yes, you are all sons in this home. Yes, you are all daughters in this home. But because you have decided to isolate yourself from the wrongdoers, the disobedient children, the stubborn children, and you have done, you decide to do things the orderly way, organized way, doing things mommy likes, daddy wants, or your boss wants. You are to work and you have done things. You know, you have given instructions, you have followed them. You have given guidance, you are doing the, the things the way your boss desires. That's why some people get promotions at work because they have done well. But of course, we are mindful of those, of, of some other f favoritisms that come. But we're also aware that there are those who do good. And when they're promoted and when they are rewarded, we clap our hands and say, yes, he deserved it. She deserved it. And so God does not segregate among his children. But everything that comes, is it a warning? Is it a rebuke? Is it an inspiration? Is it a teaching? He does it for our own good. And we're going to discover that even warning comes for our good. Live the bad way, do the correct way. So remember, friends, as we talk about these prophecies and these prophets, our faith, your faith, my faith, will hinge on, on hearing and obeying what God is saying. And what is he saying? What is his word saying? What is the teaching saying? What is the inspiration saying? What is the warning saying? And the moment you obey, you know, your faith, my faith, will hinge, will depend on your obedience, you know, yardstick, which is very, very keen. And so as we talk about the prophecies, we shall not also forget to read Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18. You know, this is what I'm saying, that these people spoke, and I'm just speaking wide and far, but we shall be concentrating on each of them, which messages did they bring and why did they bring them? Are they relevant to us? And now we have always read these verses. Now, our faith depends on what the prophet of God is saying. Now, this Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, the Bible says that now an invitation is a prophecy there. And remember, as we read verse 18, we are going to look at Isaiah in his own right 
and we shall see what does Isaiah teach us as a whole. You know, Isaiah has 66 chapters and we shall be demarcating the way the theologians have done it. And why is it the first book among the, the prophets? Because actually from this uh, literally, I mean, literally uh, books of Psalms and Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs, it's now Isaiah, the first prophet. We shall be asking himself, why is he the first? And we shall get in there. Because we need to learn something in this finding God, you know, Isaiah is actually a very, very fundamental book in finding God. So in verse 18, verse chapter 1, he invites and says, Come now, let's reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, this is where the message is. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken now. This is, these are some of the things that we are going to find more. I've just been saying that our faith depends or hinges on our obedience or disobedience. Now here, the prophecies as they were speaking, remember that they were used by God to speak these messages, to communicate God's will accurately. And we shall be talking about more about accuracy. So it was up to them to ignore. If when they ignore, verse 19 is saying, you are willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. But if you are not, then he says something will, uh, will, will devour. So when people walk in faithfulness to God's word, he blesses them. And the reverse is true. We have seen that. And so these prophets will be showing us a lot of things. And um, we shall be looking at the first mention of the word prophet during the times of Moses. And um, what was the intention that God desired in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18 to, to I mean, verses 15 to 22, God speaks, and we shall read that together. We shall read that together as we open up the prophets. But maybe we, very, very quickly, let me read it very, very quickly here. Um, Deuteronomy chapter um, 18, you know, this is what, what, what he says very, very quickly, and then I will close, I will close up. You know, chapter 18, verse 18. He told them, told Moses, verse 15 then, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him, it is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord, my God, or oh, see this great fire anymore, lest we die. And so because God used the human being, you know, they had to complain that we cannot look at God, we cannot hear him. And so he raised the man, he raised Moses as a prophet. And so in verse 18, he says, I'll raise up, I'll raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Praise the Lord. That actually here now, I'll put my word. God puts his word in the mouth of the prophet. And so when he puts the word in the, in the mouth of the prophet, when he puts his word there, when he puts his word there, like he said, if you are willing and obedient, the word is whose word? God is word. Are you willing to obey? You eat the good of the land. Whose word? God is word. Are you willing and obedient? You are not willing and obedient? The Bible says you are divided by the, by, the, by the sword. And so, friends, this moment here, as we, shall, as we are winding up, you'll discover that actually there's a lot that we're going to, to discover by ourselves. And I'll be talking more about these prophets, about these prophecies and the arrangement of them, the writing prophets and non-prophet writing prophets, the major and the minor. And we're going to discover that actually God called men and women to speak his oracles and the faith depended on the listener. Now, 
if you are willing and obedient, for me it speaks aloud during my time, during this generation. Lots of many, there are many, many things, there are many words that are spoken, but let's search deeper. Is it God's word? And if it's God's word, obey. Because the returns are not for God, the returns are for you. The prophets are for you, the listener, the obedient listener. I saw a purpose that I will listen to God's voice, that I will listen to God's word, that I will listen to God's intentions, that I will listen to God's plans, that I will listen to God's visions, and then live according to what he says, and may you benefit from his word. And so I pray for you, and I pray for everyone else, that the prophetic word of God that comes, comes with intention, comes with reason. And so may we receive God's word through his people that he has appointed, and may he continue using us. During our, and may he continue raising up men and women who are godly, and they speak the word of life to the people of God that listen. And so I pray that God will use us during our generation, like he used those ones. And as we continue listening more about the prophets and the prophecies, may God continue using us during our time in the near now and the future, and may his glory be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. <music>